it makes sense that the derivative of a constant real number has to be zero because the slope of a horizontal line is zero. But we can also prove this fact using the limit definition of derivative. The derivative of any function is the limit as h goes to zero of the function of x plus h minus the function at x divided by h. Well, here our function is just a constant, so we're taking the limit as h goes to zero of the constant minus the constant divided by h, which is just the limit as h goes to zero of zero over h, which is just the limit of zero, which is zero. Intuitively, it also makes sense that the derivative of the function y equals x is got to be 1 because the graph of y equals x is a straight line with slope 1. But again, we can prove this using the limit definition of derivative. So the derivative of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h minus x over h. Well, that simplifies to the limit of h over h, since the x's cancel. In other words, the limit as h goes to 0 of 1, which is 1, as wanted. The proof of the power rule is more complicated, and I'll only give the proof when n is a positive integer, even though the rule holds for any real number n. So when n is a positive integer, let me write out the de limit definition of derivative. Now I can expand out x plus h to the nth power using the binomial formula, which I hope you've seen before. So x plus h to the n is equal to x to the n plus n times x to the n minus 1 times h plus n times n minus 1 over 2 times x to the n minus 2 times h squared. And then we keep getting more terms, always with going down 1 in the exponent for n and going up 1 in the exponent of h until eventually we get to n x h to the n minus 1, and then finally a term of h to the n. That's the binomial expansion of x plus h to the n. Now we still have to subtract the x to the n that we had up here. And we still have to divide this whole thing by h. Okay, that's looking kind of horribly complicated. But notice that the x to the n's cancel. Notice that all of the remaining terms have an h in them. So if we factor out that h, we get n x to the n minus 1 plus a bunch of other terms. And canceling the h's, we get one term that doesn't have any h's in it and another bunch of terms that all have h's in them. As h goes to 0, all these other terms drop out because they go to 0. And what we're left with is simply n times x to the n minus 1, which is exactly what we want for the power rule. I think that's a pretty good proof if you're comfortable with the binomial formula. But if you haven't seen the binomial formula before, that might leave you feeling a little cold. So I'm going to offer you another proof using the other form of the limit definition of derivative. So let me clear some space here. And I'll start over using this definition. f prime at a is the limit as x goes to a of our function evaluated at x, so that's x to the n, minus our function evaluated at a, that's a to the n, over x minus a. Again, I'm going to need to rewrite things in order to evaluate this limit since it's currently in a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. So I'm going to rewrite the top by factoring out a copy of x minus a, which gives me x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2a plus x to the n minus 3a squared. You see the pattern here? And I keep going until I get to x 
a to the n minus 2, and finally a to the n minus 1. That's still over x minus a. You can verify this factoring formula simply by multiplying out and checking that you, in fact, do get x to the n minus a to the n after all your intermediate terms cancel. Now that I've factored, I can cancel my x minus a and simply evaluate my limit by plugging in x equal to a to get a to the n minus 1 plus a to the n minus 2a plus and so on. Each of these terms is equal to a to the n minus 1 and they're a total of n terms since we got them from the terms above that started with x to the n minus 1 and ended with x to the 0. So that's n terms. So that means we've got a final sum of n times a to the n minus 1 for a derivative f prime of a, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Next I'll prove the constant multiple rule that says that if c is a real number, a constant, and f is a differentiable function, then the derivative of a constant times f is just the constant times the derivative of f. Starting with the limit definition of derivative, I have that the derivative of c times f of x is the limit, as h goes to 0, of c times f of x plus h minus c times f of x over h. Now if I factor out the constant c from both of these terms, and actually I can pull it all the way out of the limit sign since the constant has nothing to do with h. So now I get that this is equal to the constant times the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, which is just a constant times the derivative of f, which is what we wanted to prove. The sum rule says that for differentiable functions, the derivative of the sum is equal to the sum of the derivatives, and it also follows from the limit definition of derivative. So the derivative of f of x plus g of x is, by definition, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h plus g of x plus h minus f of x plus g of x all over h. Now I'm going to distribute through the negative sign and regroup putting all the f terms together and all the g terms together. Now if I split up the sum into two pieces, I can use my limit rules to rewrite the limit of the sum as the sum of the limits since both limits exist by our assumption that the functions are differentiable. So you might recognize that these last two limits are simply the derivative of f and the derivative of g. And that finishes the proof. The difference rule can be proved just like the sum rule by writing out the definition of derivative and regrouping terms. Or we could use kind of a sneaky shortcut and put together two of our previous rules. So if we think of f of x minus g of x as being f of x plus minus 1 times g of x, then we can use the sum rule to rewrite this as a sum of derivatives and then use the constant multiplier rule to pull the constant of negative 1 out. And then we have exactly what we wanted to prove. So in this video, we gave the proof of the constant multiple rule, the sum and difference rules, and a proof of the power rule when n is a positive integer.